for more on Hong Kong's economy, I spoke to Nicholas Borse. He's a research associate and the China program manager at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Well, the Hong Kong economy is obviously very reliant on the Chinese economy, but it has been for a long time. So if you look at Hong Kong, you know, it's logistics, it's real estate, it's finance. And a lot of these things are in sort of long-term secular decline. So in my opinion, it's, it's not that surprising that the Hong Kong economy is, is doing okay, but not nearly as well as it has in the past. There's a lot of criticism that the Hong Kong economy should be doing better than it is, given the, the growth of the global economy, given the, the recovery in housing prices around the world, given its trade uh, trading with London and major international centers. Is there a reason why perhaps Hong Kong hasn't fulfilled its own dreams of becoming a bigger international trading hub, at least in the last couple of years? Well, I, th I think it's unfair to put too much blame on Hong Kong. If you look at the global trade trends, we saw, you know, a sharp recovery in 2009, 2010. But ever since then, the growth of global trade has been markedly, markedly down. So I would say all over the world, global trade is growing significantly slower. And that leads to a lot deeper issues of whether globalization will proceed at the same pace as we saw in the previous decade. Shanghai versus Hong Kong, ever since the handover, there's been always this discussion of Shanghai being a major hub, Hong Kong being a major hub, both of them competing. Um, where do you see that relationship? Because on, on one hand, they're competitors, but on the other hand, they, they work with each other as well on so many different issues. I think there's room for both. So, you know, Hong Kong will continue to have the international advantage. They have, you know, very competitive, attractive environment for expats to come in and bring in international skills. But Shanghai has the connections to mainland enterprises that Hong Kong will find hard to replicate. Um, that said, I think Shanghai will have a hard time becoming a truly international financial center as long as China remains uh, closed in terms of capital account convertibility. So that's sort of, in my mind, a prerequisite to become an international financial center. Another issue is as long as all the big banks continue to be headquartered in Beijing, as long as a lot of the focus of what's going on in financial markets is in Beijing rather than Shanghai, it's not clear to me that Shanghai is going to be the undisputed financial center of China. Li Ka-shing, of course, the richest person in Hong Kong, the richest person in Asia, um, recently talked about the wealth gap. That's keeping him up at night. He is concerned about it. And that's one of the first times that I've heard, in any case, um, you know, major tycoons, wealthy businessmen talk about this and how it might ultimately impact the future of a city or, or a country for that matter. Does it, is it a game changer that you're seeing these tycoons talk about this issue and ultimately what is the solution? Because they were also created part of the problem as well. I, I'm not sure it's a game changer. I think it's definitely important that you see these very influential people within Hong Kong society uh, finally address this problem. But I think if you look at Hong Kong politics, this has been an issue for a long, long time. You know, the wealth gap centers not only on, you know, people in finance, people in other high-end industries with very large salaries, but in my opinion, primarily on housing prices. And so as long as Hong Kong housing continues to be wildly unaffordable for a large segment of the population, I think people are going to very acutely feel that wealth gap. Question back to economics, specifically in, uh, in your area of expertise in China. Historically, there's been this competition between growth that is too fast in China and growth that is too slow. And, and you, you hear that, if, depending on which day you read the newspaper, uh, a different reporter will talk about it in different angles. They've tried to initiate reforms, such as the free trade zone in Shanghai, to try to uh, mitigate some of the concerns, try to liberalize some of the reform policies. All these things, as you look at it from your research, what's working and what needs to perhaps be uh, put more effort into making that work? I would like to see a quicker rollout of what we've seen in Sh Shanghai Free Trade Zone. So initially, they agreed to some pretty significant reforms about reducing the barriers to investment, allowing more flow of capital in and out of the zone. Um, we haven't really seen those get off the ground very much. There's been a couple banks participating in it, but really very few. And I'd like to see those reforms not only within the zone scaled up, but then gradually expanded to the rest of the economy. And, you know, the, the free trade zone is still relatively new. We're coming up on a year, but we're getting to be at the point where it, it's time to see the rubber hit the road and see some real reforms.